I want to welcome all of you in this rainy day gathered here at UNOH Event Center and also to those in the WTGN listening audience as they join us for the 66th observance of the National Day of Prayer. I'm Teresa Lee. I'm the, I'm the Allen County Coordinator of the event, the Community Observance. This year's theme is for your great name's sake. Hear us, forgive us, and heal us. And it's based on a prayer Daniel prayed in Daniel 9, where he says, Oh Lord, listen. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, hear and act for your great name's sake. Certainly we can relate to that, can we not, when we watch the news and we see the bitter opposition we have for one another from the streets to the media to the Congress, to the White House. We can certainly want to pray as he did here and act, forgive here and act. As we think about the great need for God's wisdom and direction and protection, as we look at the global crisis in North Korea, as we look at the terrorism that goes from nation to nation to nation and even to our own nation, as we look at what happens in the streets of our cities, as we look at the slaughter of Christians across the Middle East, we know we need a foreign relations policy that's wiser than we are. We know people that need to handle the money and get us into financial solvency need to have greater than man's wisdom. And we know that we need anointed ministers to touch the hearts and the needs of all of our hearts. So today, we have an answer for that. <laughs> we have a great God who hears and answered prayers. We have over 50,000 Christian observances that will happen today. They're all going to be lifting voices to God to bless and to direct, asking him to protect our nation and, and America and Americans. So I know God answers prayer. He's answered in my life, and I know he's answered it in yours. God invites us. This is still amazing to me after all these years. God invites us into this world his relationship with him as he orchestrates his divine will on the earth and he says come on ask of me i'll give you the nations he said ask me for laborers of the harvest because the fields they're widened to harvest he's asking us to reach out to him and invite him into all the affairs of our life and of our nation he wants our relationship he wants to do it with us see things don't just happen by chance it's said that history belongs to the intercessor. There are those here today and those across our nation that are bold enough to pray big prayers to a big God because they know he's looking for those who will do so. <laughs> um, there's a passage in Acts that says, of, D of David, that he fully fulfilled God's counsel and plan in his generation. That has stirred me for quite a few years to desire to do the same. And I think about us as a nation today. Will we, will it be said of us that we fully fulfill God's plan and counsel in our generation? See, this is our time. This is our time to fight. This is our time to pray. This is our time to pray and then get up and act nobly. This is our time. This is our community. This is our nation. If we don't fight in prayer, who will fight? Can it be said of us? See, I know God answers prayer. I know he's inviting. When we invite him, he's going to listen. I know, and you know too. So we can pray big prayers today and believe that he will answer them. Today we may do it together, but tomorrow and the day after that, I pray that we will continue to lift up our nation, to undergird our pastors in prayer, to undergird our county leaders and state leaders and national leaders. And when we watch the news, we don't just think, oh, I'm so afraid. But we will pray the prayer of Daniel. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, act. Amen. The first president of the United States, George Washington, in 1789, his proclamation to observe a national day of prayer and thanksgiving. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, 
and to be grateful for his benefits and humbly to implore his protection and favor. Whereas both houses of Congress's committee by their joint committees request me to re recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts and many favors of Almighty God. Now therefore I do recommend and assign this day to be devoted to the people of these United States to the service of that great glorious being who is the author of all things that are good, that was, that is, and that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere, humble thanksgiving for his kind care protection for the people of this country, for manifold mercies, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed, for the civil and religious liberties which we are blessed. May we then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations, beseech him and pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our duties properly, punctually, and to render our national government a blessing to all people by constantly being a government of wise, just, constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, and promote the knowledge and practice of true godliness and virtue. Thank you. November 11, 1620, signed by the pilgrims before leaving the ship and setting foot in America. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith and the honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and of one another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. Let us pray uh, for repentance for our area. Father, we come to you this morning and Father, we acknowledge that you are God and there is no other. Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to this area. Thank you for those pioneers that came through here with the gospel so we could hear the great news of the hope in Jesus. Father, just like Nehemiah prayed for the forefathers of Israel, we now are going to be praying for our forefathers in this area for repentance. We repent of if we mistreat the Indians in this area. We pray for repentance if we have, um, Lord, the mistakes that we have made racially 
in this area. We repent of arrogance and pride of individuals, if it might be with um, our politicians, or we pray for repentance for that. We pray for repentance of uh, pride and arrogance, maybe with it comes to denomination or churches or whatever that might be. Father, we just ask, dear God, but we know that you are holy, and we know that when there's sin in the camp, that there's, there's sin in the land, and we're praying for that sin of the land to be removed. We're, we're, we're praying, Lord, that you will not hold this against us as a community. We're asking, Father, we're bowing down in front of you. Lord, forgive us. Forgive our, our, the people in the past. Forgive us today. Lord, unite your body in Christ. Lord, unite us together as a unit. And Lord, with a mighty rushing wind, we're asking that your Holy Spirit will bring revival on this area, this time, this day. Lord, you bring it. Lord, you bring it. Father, we love you. We worship you. We're excited about what you're about to do. And we humbly come because we know that you hear and we know that you deliver. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are certainly thankful for you to spend the next hour with us here as we corporately pray for the government, we pray for the community, we pray for addictions, we pray for all of those things. So welcome to the National Day of Prayer, Daniel 919, the theme verse, O Lord, listen, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hear and act for your sake, O Lord. This is the National Day of Prayer. Would we represent you well? To that end, we need to ask forgiveness for those times when we have not whether it's through indifference or ignorance, we pray that you would embolden and empower your people to be your ambassadors of grace and mercy and compassion to a world desperately thirsty for such. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. My prayer today is regarding the epidemic, and it is an epidemic of heroin I know this, that when I go to work, and when you go to work, you receive the benefit of a paycheck at the end of the week. But when the church begins to pray, God begins to work. So let's join our faith together. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus that we have an advocate with the Father. And that, Lord Jesus, you are touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Lord, I'm reminded even in the days of Isaiah when he declared in the 60th chapter that, Lord, even with the backdrop of darkness, that, Lord, we are not called as a people to curse the darkness, but instead to release the light. And Father, we thank you that over this city, this region, this county, and in the state of Ohio, and in the Midwest and the other regions, God, we are declaring and decreeing right now in the authority of Jesus' name, let light arise and shine in the darkness. We take authority and pull down the stronghold of the spirit of pharmakia in the mighty name of Jesus, that heroin must bow its knees for the church of Jesus Christ is rising up. And I thank you, Lord, to release strategy and insight and revelation and wisdom in how to arrest this uh, epidemic, Lord God, going on. And we thank you that today, Lord God, the church does not stand idly, but Lord, we know that as we pray, Lord God, Lord, faith is being released for solutions and answers. So I speak even into those that have been backslidden and bound by this drug in Jesus' name, that dry bones will live again in Jesus' name. Father, release the breath of your spirit to cause a revival of those that have been dead and bound. We speak to those that are in the condition of Lazarus' tomb to come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you and praise you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We are bound to Israel by many ways. And in Psalms 122, verse 6, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerus Jerusalem, and may those who love you be blessed and be secure. And that we love Israel. 
and we pray for Israel. So, Father, this morning, as we join together our faith and our voices unto you, Father, we lift up Israel to you. Father, we ask, Father, for your mighty blessing upon them. Father, I ask you to begin to move on Bibi, Benjamin Netanyahu, Father, who leads Israel, Father, in many, many areas. And Father, I ask you to give him your strategy. I ask him to, Father, that he will hear your voice. He will see what you want him to do. And Father, he will be like a great chess player that he will not move until it is the right move. And he will move in such a powerful way it will checkmate those who are around him. And I thank you for doing that. What a mighty God you are. Father, I pray for those countries that, that surround Israel, Father, that are in opposition to them. Father, mostly by, your, by faith, because they don't want to follow you and your precious son, Jesus Christ. We pray for Lebanon, for Syria, for Jordan. Father, for Egypt. Father, we pray for those Palestinians. Father, you love these men and women as much as you love us. And Father, you desire that they come to know your precious son, Jesus Christ, just like you did for us. And Father, open their eyes to see you and their ears to hear what you are saying. I ask you, Father, for the visitation of your spirit upon these men and women, that, Father, they'll come and find you as their Lord and Savior. And I thank you for doing that. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. You hear the prayers of your children always. And it's your word that you, that you look after to perform and to bring forth the answers. So, Father, this morning, according to your commandment, we pray for Israel. We pray for their peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Father, that uh, your blessings will fall upon them. But most of all, Father, they'll come to know you in a greater and a mightier way than they have in the past. And they'll find you as their Lord and Savior, your precious people. I have a quote from President John F. Kennedy's 1961 inaugural address. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. Let us unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. Now the trumpet summons us again not to call to bear arms, though arms we need, not to call to battle, though embattled we are, but to call to bear the burden of the long twilight struggle year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. The energy, the faith, the devotion which bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from the fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. With a good conscience, our only, our only sure reward, with history the final, final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that there on earth God's works must truly be our own. Let us pray for the unborn. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you on this most solemn day, and we lift up to you those children who have not yet been born. Father, the womb should be the safest place in which a baby could exist. But because of the horrific tragedy of abortion, it can be a very dangerous place. Lord, we pray for protection for these little persons from the time of conception to their delivery. We ask that you would keep the hands of the abortionists away from them 
and that you would allow them to develop into healthy and whole babies. Lord, I am reminded of what David said in Psalm 139. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Father, you have always known these children, and we ask now that you would bless them and allow them to arrive safely into this world. In Christ's name, amen. Temple Christian Choir as thousands of celebrations like this taking part all across the country, all across our area as well. And we're bringing it to you live here on TV 44. We are at the Allen County National Day of Prayer. Coming up next, Pastor Darnell Williams praying protection from terrorism. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountain was brought forth, wherever you formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Father, we lift our hearts to you for our nation and our world today. That we have been exposed to a scheme of wickedness that only hell could birth. That it is terrorism. And so, Father, we unite our hearts, we unite our cries, we unite our prayers this morning, and we pray for your protection. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world today. Father, that that scourge of terrorism will be lifted. And, Lord, we don't put our confidence in the strength of our military. We don't put our confidence in the intelligence community. We put our confidence in you. You are our God. You are our keeper. You are the one that watches over us and, and looks out for us and promise to shepherd us. So, Father, today we unite our hearts with believers all over the nation, and we pray against terrorism. We pray that you would bring an end to ISIS. We pray protection against Boko Haram and other radical groups 
and ideologies that are encompassing the world, Father, that their wicked schemes will be exploited in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our military leaders. We pray for the intelligence community. We pray, Lord, that swift justice will be enacted. And Father, we put our trust and our confidence in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This time we're going to pray for our, our active military. Is there anyone in here that is actively serving? How many of you know someone that's serving? Sometimes it's easier to pray for something when you can put a face or a name to it. So you can think of a young man from our community that was deployed yesterday named Eric to Operation Spartan Shield, of all things, from Lima. Go figure. But he leaves behind a wife and a new baby boy. I don't know about you, but when you think about it that way, we need to pray for the protection of our military. Would you join me and would you pray for those who are serving us today all over the world? Father, we ask you today to be with Eric and others just like him. They're part of us. They're part of our families. They're people that represent us. They are serving to protect us, to protect the freedoms not only of the United States, but around the world and other countries that are in great need. They're putting themselves in harm's way, and they need you. They need your strength. They need your courage. They need you to protect them. And God, we just ask today for those who are serving in remote places, and they may be hidden out. They may feel totally alone, but may our prayers reach them. May your spirit reach them today. May they feel your presence and your protection with them. God, you're the only one that can truly protect them, and we ask that you will be with each of them. And Lord, their families who are here and the struggles that they face and, and their loved one being away from them, God, we just pray that you'll put a hedge of protection around those homes. God, be with these families and watch over and protect them. And God, help us to be found faithful to remember to pray for them. In Jesus' name. I'm here to pray for the firefighters and the police officers and all of the hands uh, that God has blessed to heal. Uh, last evening, actually in the morning, uh, my wife, she had awoke. And uh, she said God was talking to her. And he said that Andy had wrote an okay prayer. Um, but I think we can work a little better and, and, and give him a good prayer. So I'm pretty sure you guys know which prayer I'm probably going to be reading right now. I'm still not used to wearing glasses. Dear Lord, we are so blessed to have men and women to work diligently for our safety and well-being. I just want to lift up all of our first responders to you in prayer and ask that you bless the work of their hands. Please guide them with your wisdom and knowledge so they may be able to bring comfort and peace to others in those times of tragedies. May they find great fulfillment in what they do, even when the job is demanding and often thankless. For it is written, if anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Let us always remember as first responders that you are our strength and refuge and a very present and in times of trouble. As we walk through the fire, we shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch us. Therefore, please replace any fear that we may have so we can walk in your strength and courage. I pray that you will protect, and protect uh, the protectors and their families. Let no harm come near us. May your angel always encamp around those that serve in their, with their families. Please bless all my brothers and sisters with good health and sound minds and protection. We thank you, Lord, for giving our community people that are willing to sacrifice so much for the greater good. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And on a final note, I would like to... Um, there's a sorrowful passing in the Pugsley family um, that's part of our fire family. Monica was called back to heaven, and I just pray for the Pugsley family and their hour of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's my honor to share with you a uh, portion of President Harry S. Truman's 1949 inaugural address. The American people stand firm in the faith which has inspired this nation from the beginning. 
We believe that all men have a right to equal justice under the law and equal opportunity to share in the common good. We believe that all men have the right to freedom of thought and expression. We believe that all men are created equal because they are created in the image of God. From this faith, we will not be moved. Our democracy maintains that government is established for the benefit of the individual and is charged with the responsibility of protecting the rights of the individual and his freedom in the exercise of his abilities. These differences between communism and democracy do not concern the United States alone. People everywhere are coming to realize that what is involved is material well-being, human dignity, and the right to believe in and worship God. We are aided by all who desire freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom to live their own lives for useful ends. Our allies are the millions who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Steadfast in our faith in the Almighty, we will advance toward a world where man's freedom is secure. To that end, we will devote our strength, our resources, and our firmness of resolve. With God's help, the future of mankind will be assured in a world of justice, harmony, and peace. The American people stand firm in the faith which has inspired this nation from the beginning. Join me as we pray for our president and national leaders. Father, I know as a pastor the great responsibility that I feel for a congregation. But Father, I cannot fathom the responsibility that the President of the United States must feel for a whole nation. And Father, today I come lifting up our President, Donald J. Trump. Father, our Senate, our House of Congress, the House of Representatives, as well as all of the national leaders. Father, our country is in a crisis today. We have the threats of nuclear war like no other time in our history. We pray that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I ask that you give our president and our national leaders wisdom for seeing life from your perspective and dealing with these issues that we face today. Lord, for discernment, to know the difference between good and evil and what's best for America and how to evaluate things with perspective. And for courage, once they know what's wise and have discerned it, that they would then be courageous to obey it. Father, for understanding what's going on and what you are doing, like the sons of Issachar, who had an understanding of the times. Father, for sensitivity to your Holy Spirit and to the needs of others around them and to opposition. And Lord, for vision. Your vision, for where there is no vision, the people perish. Father, help them not to just maintain. Lord, give them a, a passion for what they are doing. Help them to have a love for their family, their job, and our nation. And Father, I'm reminded of the great preacher, John Knox, back in the 1500s, who prayed the prayer, Give me Scotland or I die. Father, who is praying that in America today? Give me America or I die. Give me Lima, Ohio or I die. Father, help us to pray with fervency and help us to pray in faith. But God, neither one of those work if we don't pray with forgiveness. And Father, we pray today again for our leaders Lord, for only the things that you can give. And we ask all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. In the Orthodox Church, we have a greeting for 40 days until Ascension after Easter. We say, the believer, Orthodox believer says, Christ is risen. And the, the other uh, believing friend says, indeed he is risen. 
So if you would indulge me, I'll say Christ is risen. You say, indeed he is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Thank you for indulging me. Before we pray for our law enforcement and justice system of our community, I just wanted to mention uh, it is a wonderful honor and privilege to have so many members of our law enforcement community uh, here in Lima with us. We are very grateful for your sacrificial service. We're very honored that you would be present here to pray with us, whether this is kind of the way you pray or not. We're grateful for your being here. Uh, I see Keith Cheney is here. We're grateful for you to be here as well. It's good to have you pray with us as well. And uh, time would fail me to, to mention everyone's name. I have to write down what I pray because I'm getting old and forgetful. I'm not nearly as close to God as these esteemed pastors uh, behind me. But let's, let's do pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for, for our justice system. Almighty God of justice and mercy, peace and goodness, your holy prophet Amos cried out, may justice roll down like a river, may righteousness like a never failing stream. We pray for the justice system of our country, which is in confusion and turmoil. May judges and legislators, law enforcement work with community leaders and pastors to bring peace and safety to our citizens, to end oppression and exploitation to defend the vulnerable and the defenseless, to see justice in, our, in Lima land, in Allen County, in Northwestern Ohio, in our nation. We pray for the Supreme Court, for Chief Justice John Roberts, Anthony Kennedy, Clarence Thomas, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stephen Breyer, Samuel Alito, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Keegan, and Neil Gorsuch. Oh Lord, grant them clarity of thought and sanity of mind. Grant them personal repentance, a true wisdom from above. May your Holy Spirit grant them uh, discernment in these days of moral insanity. Uh, grant them to defend the First Amendment religious freedoms uh, and societal decency. We pray for lawyers uh, that they might uh, stand for what is just and stand for freedom. We pray for laws that would protect women and men, for ourselves. We pray that you help us to love our neighbors more than we love ourselves. Um, use our hands to extend help to those in need and guide our hearts to the way of peace and break our hearts for the things that break yours. Help us to show mercy as you are merciful. For those members of our law enforcement community here in Allen County in Lima land, and we pray for peace in their hearts, in their families, in their marriages. We ask for our community leaders that you might be guiding them in the way of peace. Rouse in our hearts, in the hearts of all those who call you Lord Jesus, a hunger and thirst for racial harmony. We ask, O oh God, for mercy upon us as you are merciful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think it was about 10 years ago when I was given a statistic from a survey on the national media. It was a survey to find out how many in the national media adhered to a biblical worldview. 10 years ago, that statistic was less than 2%. When I recognized that 10 years ago, how few of our national media was decide, desiring to serve Christ, it gave a bigger picture into who controlled the media airwaves, because clearly it wasn't God. Folks, that was 10 years ago. What have you seen since then in regards to morals, in regards to beliefs, in regards to what we are supposed to be accepting and not, and how have you seen the media push an agenda? When I went to college years ago, it was, it was imprinted into my brain that we were to be unbiased. And sadly, I don't think we're seeing that today. I share that statistic with you because as you turn on your favorite national media, I want you to remember that and know that when you're being fed information, which so much anymore is opinion, it may not be what God wants you to listen to. So today as we pray for the media, we're not just going to pray for the media, but we're also going to pray for ourselves because we have a responsibility to choose what goes into our eyes, into our ears, and into our minds because God 
has a purpose for our country. Heavenly Father, we do bring to you first and foremost the media, first locally, statewide, nationally. God, we recognize that our national media too often is not serving your purpose. They are pushing an agenda that is straight from Satan, and we want it to be gone. We recognize unbiblical truths are being pushed in our media every single day, not only to us as adults, but to our children. And our children are growing up hearing things that are directly opposite of what the Bible is leading. But these media representatives are in so many ways seen as heroes, and they are seen as superstars, and so people believe them. But Lord, we want you to be stronger than that. Father, I just ask right now that you would select members of the media who you know whose hearts can be opened, whose minds can be changed, and who will desire to slowly turn that around and use those media airwaves to spread your message. Even though Satan may control the media, we know that you are stronger and that you can stop those things. We ask that you would open more doors and opportunities for Christian media individuals to step into the secular national airwaves and be able to send your message across to our nation. And we ask for a hedge of protection around those individuals because they are in their own battle and they are fighting an area that Satan has had a stronghold in for a very long time. But Father, as that is happening, we know we live in an evil world. And even though we desire to see the media be used for your glory in all things, truthfully, we are not going to get that all the time. So Lord, I ask we'll pray for every single person who listens to the media, who reads the media, who watches the media, and I ask that they do that with your filter. God, remind them that as they are watching opinionated news programs, that that's exactly what it is. It's opinion, and it may not be fact, and many times it's not. So Lord, I ask for individuals in this room and surrounding to have the ability to turn it off when it's not your will, to recognize when it's information that is a glimpse into where our country is going and use it as that, but don't allow ourselves to be bought into us. Protect our eyes, protect our ears, protect our minds. As the scripture says, we are to watch and guard what enters into our minds and do not allow us to be overwhelmed by emotion which puts us off your path. Lord, put us on your path for the media individuals today and for us as we are so engrossed in media. Give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and give us direction so that we can listen to you as the ultimate news anchor, the ultimate news deliverer for you have the message that we need to hear and help us to proclaim that as far as we possibly can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to quote to you the I'm going to quote to you Andrew Jackson's 1837 farewell address. Providence has showered on this faithful land blessings without number and has chosen you as the guardians of freedom to preserve it for the benefit of the human race. May he who hold in his hands the destiny of nations make you worthy of the favors he has bestowed and enable you with pure hearts and hands and sleepless vigilance to guard and defend to the end of time the great charge he has committed to your keeping. Please believe with me as I pray that the spirit of integrity would never be compromised. Lord, thank you for this National Day of Prayer and this opportunity to come before your people to pray for integrity in ourselves and for our leaders. Titus 2, 7 says, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity and dignity. Heavenly Father, strengthen us each day to walk that straight and narrow path that leads to you, our Lord and Savior. Help us as believers to never deviate to the left or to the right but to strive to live a life of integrity, holiness, and righteousness. Your word says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And you, almighty God, will enable us through the Holy Spirit to live a life of integrity and, and humility. As community leaders, elected officials, pastors, and men and women of authority, Lord, help us to shine our lights in our city, to be godly examples of you in all our ways. 
May we resist the temptation to walk that crooked path that leads to corruption and ungodly behavior. Father, help us to learn of you, Father, so that we can know the way in which we are to walk. May our eyes always stay fixed on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, help us to lead a disciplined life. May all that we do bring you honor and glory, and may it be done unto you and not unto man. Lord, in this world today where integrity is compromised, ignored, forsaken on all levels, let us as your people be found faithful and obedient to the end. Looking forward to that day when you will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today I've been given the awesome privilege to pray for our cities, our counties, and our state leaders. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we are aware of the importance of knowing that those who represent us, that we, Lord, have placed them there, knowing that awesome responsibility at a state level, all these states, Lord, that are represented, even our own state, the great state of Ohio, that these governors are given the awesome responsibility to govern with integrity, with character, with wisdom. But we know ultimately the highest wisdom is your wisdom. The highest authority is your authority. And Lord, they desperately need your influence. They desperately need your guidance. And Lord, wisdom begins with fear, the fear that you give all of us, the awesomeness of humility, Lord, and the way that it works when we look to your word for guidance. Lord, I pray that not only do they have your guidance, their families, Lord, that as you watch over them, as they represent our states, as they represent our, our counties and our cities, Lord, that you would give them the understanding that comes only from you. Their administrations, Lord, that in, in all these different responsibilities, Lord, that they would look to you. And if not, Lord, you would give them revelation to know who you are and the power that comes when we acknowledge you. I pray today, Lord God, as we see these things unfold around us, Lord, that they would recognize, Lord, that they can't do this on their own. Lord, that all these natural problems, all these challenges, challenges they face oftentimes have spiritual roots. And so, Father, we pray that their minds would be open to understand how desperately we need your counsel, Lord, to guide, guard, and to govern. And so I pray, Lord God, as they face these things, we think of Governor Kasich, we think of our commissioners, we think, Lord God, of our city council, our mayor, all the administrations, Lord. I pray today that they would take their responsibilities not as ones who have their own agenda, but Lord, they would see the ultimate need as representing all of us, Lord. They face such challenges in our cities of drugs, crime, poverty, social, economical, racial challenges. They desperately need you to have guidance. And Lord, we pray for them today. Our responsibility to hold them accountable, Lord, we know that it takes you we pray for them today. We acknowledge that we need to humble ourselves and seek your face and know that our cities will not have peace and our cities will not have prosperity without your hand upon them. We honor you today. We thank you for a supernatural touch of blessing upon them as we look to you to guide, guard, and govern. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? And all the time, he's an all-time good God. And we must be thankful to God that he is our God. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Let us offer up a prayer for our spiritual leaders. Heavenly Father, great God Almighty, please send more laborers into thy vineyard more especially because your son Jesus Christ asked us to ask you because the, the, the laborers are few and the, the, the harvest is great. And thank you for the understanding that we are the laborers. We are the harvest. We are the vineyard. We are our spiritual leaders. And for those who are of our clergy, 
that have picked up the mantle in our community. We ask you to reinforce this understanding to them as identified in Isaiah chapter 61. For the Spirit of the Lord of God is upon all of them because he has anointed them to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent them to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open the opening of the prison to those who are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this and imbibe in them what they need to continue to preach that word. And we'll give you all the thanks as we always do in the name of thy powerful son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If you don't mind standing with me this morning, we are going to pray. And I'd like you to hold hands with each other. If men want to put their hands on each other's shoulders, that's fine. But I want us to agree today. And I don't want to be the only one praying. I want you to agree with me. I want you to pray along with me as we pray for a spiritual awakening in our nation, for a spiritual awakening in our city for a spiritual awakening individual lives in our churches in our homes why don't you agree with me this morning father in the name of Jesus we come to you with confidence because we know in whom we have believed we know that you are a good God you're a faithful God you are God above all gods and there's none to be compared with you Lord God so we come to you with confidence today knowing that when we pray heaven stops and listens father this morning that's why we come to you and we ask you today father we stop home in our Jerusalem oh God we pray for the city of Lima this morning we pray oh God for a revival for a spiritual awakening in our churches for a spiritual awakening among us as pastors for a spiritual awakening among us as believers in our homes oh God individual lives father we pray for young people we pray for children that there will be a spiritual awakening in them oh God creating them a thirst for you creating them a hunger for you a yearning for you come on believers help me pray this morning create within them oh God a thirst that would wake them up during the night oh God and give them a desire to call on the name the name of Jesus I pray God across this city that there will be an outpouring of your prayer presence. Uh, Holy Father, we call on you today. We don't want it to be just a form. We don't want it to be just religious. We want an outpouring of the Spirit of Almighty God to give us a breakthrough, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray you will open the portals of heaven over this city. And oh God, you would begin to stir this city. Stir us as pastors, oh God. Stir us as leaders of this city. Oh God, Father, give breakthroughs in this city. Bring healing, oh God, in this city, Father. Bring revival, oh God, in this city, in our schools, in our churches, oh God, in our places of work. Father, let there be a revival and a stirring, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And now we pray, God, for a nation that the same will be spilled into our nation. Oh, God, bring an awakening, oh, God. Bring an awakening of who you are. Oh, God, let this thing become real to us, Lord. Let it not just be something we talk about. Oh, God, or we read about. Holy Spirit, let it become real in this city. 
Hallelujah. And real in our nation. And real in our hearts, dear God. And we commit this to you today because we have confidence that when we pray, that when God's people pray, when God's people pray, that heaven stops and listens. And we commit it all to you today, God. We commit our lives to you. We rededicate ourselves. We rededicate our homes. We rededicate our churches. We rededicate everything we have got. We give it back to you today. Even our nation. We give you our nation. We give you our children. We give you everything, dear God. Nothing that we have belongs to us. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to draw together, to draw close to you. And in this moment, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would decrease me in every way. This is not my platform. This is the platform of the Holy Spirit. And I ask that my voice would not be the voice that is heard, but Father, you can use me. I'll be your vessel. And I ask God that the words I say not be my imagination, but your revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome again to the 66th annual observance of the National Day of Prayer. Amen. The theme this year is a wonderful plea and prayer to God. And it is this, for your great name's sake, hear us, forgive us, and heal us. Well, our loving and merciful God has already provided a way for healing, forgiveness, and answered prayers for his great name's sake. Ladies and gentlemen, faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are his great name's sake. My name is not Damian Jackson or Kennedy or Washington. My name is Damian Tibbs because my father is Edward. I am my father's namesake. And when you are a believer in Jesus Christ, when you have been adopted into the family of God, you become the namesake of the great and mighty God. We are his namesake. And he has already given us an outline on how to get prayers answered. Second Chronicles 7:14 says, "If my people, that's us, that's the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ, if my people, which are called by my name, I told you we were his namesake, called by his name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land." We are his people. We must all come together because there is no pure denomination. There is only pure religion. Denominational walls in this city must fall to the ground and they must fall hard. Jesus. We can no longer afford to have 800 different churches flying 800 different flags. We must all come under the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Jesus. The things that have been set up to divide the bride must be discarded, and pure religion must be established for God's great namesake. What is pure religion? James 1.27 says this, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That is what churches must begin doing. We must bind ourselves together and feed the people and love the people and encourage the people and stay spotless from the things of this world. There is one Lord and Savior and his name is Jesus Christ. He's coming back for one bride. He's coming back for one church. And we must stand up and we must say we will not be divided by denominations. We will not be divided by pastors. We're going to stand up and we're going to represent the kingdom of God here on earth. 
that is when this nation will change and that is when God will reach down and hear from heaven when we become one. The thing is this, we always want to hear God. We always want God to hear us and then to take quick action. Well, I'm here to tell you today that the delay is not on God's end. The problem is that we hear and then do nothing. We must be doers of his word and not hearers only. It is obedience to his word alone that releases forgiveness and healing in this land. Second Chronicles 7.14, there are four keys to release the hand of God. Humbleness, prayer, seeking, and turning. Jesus, when he was in the garden, said this, Nevertheless, not my will be done, Lord, but let thine will be done. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is no other way. We must bind together and we must do what has been outlined in the word of God. And then we must do this. We must say nevertheless and then we must pick up our crosses. There's that word cross. You see, we have been drifting away from a Christianity that requires a cross and drifting towards a Christianity that is comfortable. But we must pick up the crosses for his name's sake, amen? His church and his bride we must rise together to the occasion because nothing brings God greater glory than people that follow after his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. We must turn away from our wicked ways, and that requires us to follow Jesus the way that he has said. Matthew 16, 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You see, it is John 6, 3, 16 that saves our souls, but it is John 3.30 that keeps us humble, praying, and turning. And John 3.30 declares this, he must increase, but I must decrease. You see, the less of us that people see, the more of Jesus Christ that they will see in our lives and the more glory that he will be given. The command for the church, the thing that we should all be doing is found in Matthew 5, 16, which says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, God has already answered the prayer of Daniel 9, 19, but are we faithful and willing enough to do our part? He has heard us, he has healed us, he has forgiven us. You see, we are pointing at the world and say, saying, God, fix them. But God is pointing at his son, and his son is pointing at the holes in his hands, and he is saying, it is finished. All you need to do is do what I have commanded you to do as the church, and then we will see the hand of God in our land. God bless you. Powerful words from Pastor Damian Tibbs calling for unity in our community and calling for us to take up our cross and follow him. Be watching Faith and Friends in the coming weeks. We will re-air that segment with Pastor Tibbs. Incredible, powerful words. Now we bring you Kelly Connor Spollinger with a beautiful song. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation we believe, we believe in this broken generation when all is dark you help us see. There is only one salvation we believe, oh God, we believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our 
faith be more than anthems and greater than the songs that we sing and in our weakness and temptations we believe on Ephesians 1, 17 to 21. I pray to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight into the mysteries and secrets and the deep knowledge of him. By having the eyes of our hearts flooded with light so that we may know and understand the hope to which he has called us and how right is his glorious inheritance in the saints, so we may know and understand what is the unmeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power and, and for us who believe. I'm asking that we pray for marriages and families. Marriages and families are under attack. Let us pray for marriages and families. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for the father slash husband that he will love his wife as Christ loves the church. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I pray that the husband and father will be the father of the home by giving guidance for his family. He will be the father who gives guidance and supports his wife. I pray for the mother slash wife that they will submit to their husbands. I pray for a quiet and gentle spirit in marriages. I pray for the respect for each other in marriage. I pray for all the things that create division. I pray for the children, for obedience to, and to their parents for salvation, spiritual growth. I pray against the spirit of divorce, lust, impurity. I especially pray against the following sins that the Holy Spirit will convict people of these and that they will turn from them. Homosexuality, cohabitation, adultery, child molest, suicide, alcohol and drug abuse. I pray against the involvement of a third party in marriage. 
I pray for good communication and open and honesty in marriage. I pray for the deep conviction of sin and that the husband and wife will walk in the light of God together. I pray for understanding of each other and the ability and willingness to meet those needs. I pray against selfishness, self-indulgence, and willingness to give up marriage. I pray that there will be no misunderstandings. The single biggest problem in marriages is misunderstanding. And when there are specific problems in marriage, jealousy, misuse of alcohol, extramarital relationships, we must pray for these matters. We pray for the parents and the raising and handling of their children. And brothers and sisters, we pray for the forgiveness that marriage partners will forget the past and forgive one another and make their marriages strong. We especially take the time to pray for all who are struggling these days in marriage and family issues, and we ask that you, God put your love and grace over it all, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, so you join me in prayer for the youth in our community. Almighty God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the breath that we take, the food that we eat, the water that we drink. We know that you care for us every moment of our lives on this planet from conception to death, and in every season of life, we give you great thanks. Today, Father, we specifically think of those among us in our community who are working very hard to make the transition from child to adult, from girl to woman, from boy to man. We know what a difficult time in life that is. And today, the request for our young people is twofold. First, we ask for guidance for those who are in that transition from childhood to adult. In that guidance, we ask for patience that these young people will get to enjoy their youth, enjoy their friends, enjoy all the wonderful benefits of being young. We ask that their choices will be wise so they will not be rushed too quickly from childhood into being an adult. There is so much pressure in our world to encourage our young people into making adult decisions. We ask you to protect our young people from being forced into that ridiculous choice. Keep them young. Make them responsible, make them wise, so that they can stay young for as long as they possibly can. Our second request today, God, is that you will also protect our young people from the parasites, the leeches, and the other forces of evil that seek to exploit them in any way. For anyone who would look at a child or a young adult as an opportunity for personal gain, we ask you to stop that evil in its tracks. When a young person is able to make a choice, we pray that that choice will be wise. When a young person has a choice, has a situation where the choice is taken from them through coercion, peer pressure, or family situations, we pray that you will personally step in and protect those young people. We pray that our young people will be empowered to walk through the valley of the shadow of death with no fear of evil. We ask that your rod and your staff will protect them from any force from which they cannot protect themselves. And we boldly ask you to do this through any means necessary. We love our young people and we ask that we will be a people who will not tolerate any threat to them from any source. We thank you for blessing us with our youth. Make us good stewards of these precious gifts. But we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be here today to join with fellow saints in praying to our Lord. I'm going to be praying for, asking for you to join me in praying for businesses. Uh, business is something that affects everyone here, whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, we all have to go to the grocery. We all have to call a plumber from time to time. We all go to the hairdresser to get our hair cut. There's many businesses out there and I would just like to acknowledge there's also many Christian businesses out there that work and try to be an example of Jesus Christ in their business. And I would just like to salute them if you're here today because it is a real challenge. And God will bless you for honoring him in your business. So please join me this afternoon. I guess we're in afternoon now. Uh, as we lift up the businesses in this area, in this community, whether they're small or great, 
they do serve us and they do a great meet a great need in our lives father we thank you for this day we thank you for this opportunity that we can gather together in freedom and acknowledge you father lord we ask that our continual freedom would be given unto us as a country, as a nation. And Lord, as we lift up the businesses to you that are in this local area today, Father, we ask, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would be with the little small businesses, be with the great businesses that, that maybe work in the big figures, millions of dollars, but also for the small business father that is struggling right now or that has to make decisions, father, concerning their business, father, we would bring them to you today, father. Whether they're great or small, Lord, you are able to work and they do have a service to us as consumers. And father, I would ask also that you would bless them and give them favor in the marketplace, O oh God. Lord, that you would add unto them, and in blessing them, Father, you would in turn bless us as they serve us in so many different ways. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the prayers that have gone up this morning. And Lord, I just pray as this nation joins together today to recognize whether it be families, whether it be communities, whether it be people, any people in service, Father, Lord, that you would hear our cry. Lord, as it was already quoted this morning, if my people will humble themselves and pray, you will hear from heaven, you will hear our prayer, and you will heal our land. And Father, I just ask, that the prayers of this nation this day would come up before you, Lord, and it would be a sweet fragrance unto you, O God. And Lord, that you would hear our prayer. And Father, we know in hearing our prayer that you will answer. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm here because it's my privilege to close this. Isn't that wonderful? You know, I've been involved with this over 17 years. It gets more glorious every year. Just to be around long enough to be able to pray, be able to hear the prayers of the saints. I ask you to, to stand with me for the blessing, if you would, please. What I'm going to quote to you is the, the blessing from Hebrews the latter part of it, the 13th chapter, and that's a, glory, a wonderful blessing. I want you to pay close attention to it. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands because you know you're closer to God now, and as you lift your hands, you got your antennas up, ready to receive it. Do that. Let us pray. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you.
beautiful 90 minutes of prayer, of thanksgiving, of praise, as as a community we have come together to worship the Lord, to seek his face, to cry out to him for this town, for this community, for Northwest Ohio. We thank you for joining us here on the National Day of Prayer Celebration in Lima. Don't let your prayer opportunities end now. Now is the point to jumpstart prayer to continue. Continue it today, continue it tomorrow, continue it in the days and weeks and months to come. I want to thank you again for joining us. TV 44, our broadcast of the Allen County National Day of Prayer. For more information about the National National Day of Prayer organization, visit nationaldayofprayer.org.